Oh, here we go. And now we're live on YouTube. Okay, hello, uh, welcome. My name is Chris Shelton. And I'm Parisa Shelton. And thank you for joining us this whole past week for Qi Discovery Week because Qigong is the foundation of Chinese medicine. It's actually the foundation of what helped me transform my life when I was out of control, especially as a young, uh, well, young uh, teenager, late teens. Yeah. So into 18, the 20s. Yeah, into my early 20s. Well, actually, it carried on uh, because the, the full truth of the story is once life got good from practicing Qigong daily and my health improved, all my digestive issues went away, um, my sinus issues went away, stopped living on all kinds of medications, and also my back improved too because doctors at the time were mm. saying that um, after that kick to the back that, Chris, you know, you might not be able to walk again if you don't move the right way uh, or if you move the wrong way. And... Um, and, you know, they said, well, as I continue to improve, they said, well, okay, well, Chris will walk, but he'll never uh, train again. Then it was, well, mm. Chris will train again, but he'll never fight again. And I did my, actually, my last amateur fights at age 40 uh, with Kung Lee's uh, fight team and uh, uh, some smokers. And then also, <laughs> that's what they called him. And then, okay. um, yeah, because it's competition style kickboxing. So uh, you, when you win, you keep on fighting. I see. Yeah, so it's a little, yes. a little bit different. Um, and then also, too, um, I was competing with uh, Tai Chi in tournaments um, as a martial art as well, too. So, mm. you know, totally defeated, went against everything the doctors were saying. And wow. so I'm a living, te living testimonial of the power of Qigong. But to be transparent, though, you know, when things will get good, because once your energy starts to shift and your mm. vibration starts to change, like your outside environment, everything around you starts to improve as well. That's true. And my extreme nature would be that things would start going good because I was practicing Qigong all the time. Yeah. And then something would pull me off course, boy. And uh, You get was, sidetracked. I get sidetracked. It, it was actually <laughs> when I got a chance to start my clinical practice in 2001 mm. that that was the thing that actually helped pull me back into alignment completely Zoop. because the universe said, Chris, you got to focus. If you don't take this opportunity, this mm. might be your last chance this lifetime. Wow, and you took that chance. I took this that chance. And, and what um, a miracle. Yeah. And now you're paying it forward. So not only have you helped to improve your life, you're also able to help others improve theirs as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, uh, Qigong was the, is the foundation of Chinese medicine. And seriously, it was the foundation for me to be able to transform myself. But also throughout the years of being in clinical practice and helping people from around the world, I've been witness, we bear witness to thousands of people changing their lives for the better so that's so true the difference about i would say with this system is that it's not a codependent system meaning that we want mm. you to people to uh, keep coming back in and, year and year out yeah, we want we, you to get better so that you can move on right and um and and, and really what it's about is self-empowerment so mm. instead of a codependent thing it's like well how can i help empower you to be the best version of yourself and because I tested the envelope, because I've had a lot of hardship in my life, I will share openly with all my clients, with all my followers, that of uh, what I've been through and how I was able to transform it. Mm, that's true. Open book. Open book. I'm like an open book. So yeah. I'll share. And we definitely have our own sagas and dramas going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's what's cool is to be having these tools in order to shape shift and change how you feel. So today we have TikTok on the phone and we're going to go to some questions. I see some questions coming in. Um, we have a little bit different setup on YouTube where now we have the slides with the voiceover. So we're going to be bouncing back and forth um, from the computer to the screen. So welcome and day four has begun. So yeah, so as she's uh, uh, changing those slides there for YouTube, um, you know, the reality is, is that uh, um, we all have issues. We have issues that live in our tissues. That's not my quote. That's somebody else's quote. And those issues eventually show up, if we, especially if we su uh, suppress them. So if you don't take time out to address what's going on in your life, then eventually it will show up as inflammation and disease. Is there any questions so far? Before yeah, we so we were just before we start to center ourselves and get a balance, we have a comment from David Zimora. Uh, thank you, sir. I had four strokes in two years. Oh, wow. wow. wow so sorry. Um, I was in an uh, international bodyguard 15 years and MMA. Oh, wow. How can oh. I get a hold of you, sir? So you can get a hold of us. Uh... Uh, go to sheltonshigong.com and um, fill out the uh, get your five element questionnaire. And also for a direct message, there's a little contact tab. 
oh, actually on TikTok, you can send a direct message that way too. Yeah, and we can coordinate. Yeah, we can coordinate. Yeah, we're here in Burbank. Yeah, and um, yeah, and so when we talk, we'll talk about the ideology behind the strokes and then um, what else you could do also to help to transform if, there, if there's any residue. My, um, I don't know if you caught the videos earlier this week, but my dad, uh, who's a Vietnam vet, um, had the stroke several years ago and had uh, dementia as a result. But over the years of having him at home, a, a great caretaker, mm -hmm. also uh, uh, treating him with Chinese herbology and such, you know, we were able to actually improve his quality of life. Yeah. And um, so, yes, let's reach out and That's let's, true. Let's, let's connect. And one thing about your dad is that even though he had all those um, physical ailments, his disposition was so delightful. He was just so at peace with... Which was a transformation. Yeah. Because mm. growing up, it wasn't that way. Wow. Yeah. And when we release your film, we'll get oh, yeah. to see that Oh, yeah. When my new film too. comes out this year to the film festivals, you get to see... Uh, the film's called The Healer's Journey, and you'll get to see just that arc of um, what had occurred. So, um, while Let's we get started, yeah, yeah, with the Center and Balance Meditation. By the way, if you like this med meditation, uh, it's available on Spotify. It's also available on um, on the iPhone as well, too. So Spotify, on Apple, Apple, yeah, YouTube, YouTube, yeah. So, those. so just look up Chris Shelton, uh, the Center and Balance Meditation. Well, I also have another med meditation on there called the White Pearl Meditation, which is good for your kidneys. We've been actually closing up each of the Qigong series that, we, uh, that we've been doing all week with, with that them. White Pearl Meditation. All right, so before we drop in and connect, let me tell you the importance of this meditation. The importance of this meditation is that it gets you uh, to know your body. So the whole idea is, is that the superior doctor is one that can prevent disease before disease sets in. So how can you understand your body before disease sets in. And this meditation is, if you do it enough, actually will allow you the opportunity to feel inside your body. I know it sounds crazy. Mm. It's not like you're tangibly grabbing your internal organs, but it's a knowing. That's the best way I could describe it. Mm. And the more you listen to this, the more you listen to your body, guess what? And you start to feel like, oh, my spleen is out of balance. Guess what? Then from there, what you could do is you do these Qigong practices in order for you to help to rectify that before it actually shows up as uh, clinical disease. All right. So that's the main purpose of this meditation and also to get you out of your head and back into your body. So we're going to just start off here mm -hmm. with our feet out, shoulders width apart. And I'm going to tuck that sacrum underneath. By tucking that sacrum underneath and unlocking those knees, I'm going to press back the Ming Men, which is the acupuncture point right opposite the belly button. Going to gently tuck the chin and by doing so, I'm elongating the cervical spine and pressing up on the crown point also referred to as the ba hui, all right? Tip of the tongue, gently curl to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth as if saying the letter N, and the breath is long, steady, even, and deep into the lower abdomen. So as we connect with one another, connect with ourselves, <clears throat> the breath is long, steady, even, and deep into the lower abdomen. As you inhale, you're gonna feel yourself becoming more calm, and as you exhale, you're gonna become more and more relaxed. So as I inhale, I inhale calmness. And as I exhale, I'm relaxed. Allowing your head to melt into your shoulders, the shoulders to melt into your waist, the waist into the knees, into the ankles, and into the ground, feel a strong connection with the ground. And imagine now that you have a smiling face on the front of the forehead and warm oil begins to melt down through the front of the body, allowing you the awareness to feel what's in front of you. So you could use warm oil or a light, whatever it's gonna allow you to have this connection. So as this warm oil melts down and envelops the entire forehead, the brow bone, eyebrows and eyes, the temples, the nose, the cheeks, the front of the ears, the lips, the chin and jaw structure. Flowing and pouring through the upper chest, this warm oil then flows down through the biceps and elbow creases, the forearms, the wrists, the palms of the hands leading all the way out to the fingertips. And you feel this warm oil as it envelops from the neck and throat into the chest and the flanks of the body, the ribs, the abdomen, flowing through the waist, pouring and overflowing into the groin. This warm oil relaxes the thighs, the knees, 
the shins, the ankles, the top of the feet and toes, connecting the entire body and allow for this warm oil to melt down deep into the ground. And starting at the crown point, imagine a warm oil melting down to the back of the head, touching every hair follicle, every cell, every tissue as it melts down behind the ears, the base of the skull into the neck, the shoulders, the triceps and elbows, the back of the forearms, the wrists, the back of the hands leading out to the fingertips. Now you allow for this warm oil to envelop the entire upper back, mid back and low back. The energy wells up at the waist, flows and over pores through the buttocks. The hamstrings, the back of the knees, the calves, ankles and heels. And once again, just allow for this warm oil to melt down deep into the ground. From there, just take a moment to feel your entire body from head to toe. Feeling just as much in the back as you do in the front, as well as to the left and to the right. And connecting to your higher power, whatever that is, imagine a white light that penetrates through the crown point. You feel and visualize the brain and surrounding tissues, the space between the brain and the skull. You visualize and feel the bones of the face, the nerves that connect from behind the eyes to the center of the brain, the sinus cavity, the inner ear, the upper palate of the mouth, the tongue, the lower palate, inch by inch, cell by cell, tissue by tissue, traveling down from each vertebra of the neck and throat. Feel the air passageway branching off into the bones and fascia of the upper chest, back and shoulders. Melting down to the center of the biceps, triceps, you feel the muscles, the arteries, the bones as you melt into the elbows, the center of the forearms, and all the small bones and ligaments of the wrists, hands, and fingers. And now from there, just allow for this white light to penetrate and touch every rib. Feel as the ribs wrap around to the spine on the back. You now visualize and feel the heart, the lungs, the liver and gallbladder on the right side of the body, the stomach and spleen on the left side, the intestines, the urinary bladder, the kidneys, the pelvic bone, the iliac, the sacrum, the bones of the legs, the muscles surrounding them and the main arteries that flow down from the inner groin down through the inner aspect of the legs, extending and nurturing the extremities of the feet and toes, down through the center of the knees, the shins, ankles, and once again, just allow for this white light to travel down all the way out through all the bones and ligaments and muscles of the feet and down deep into the ground. Next, imagine that your feet melt into the earth like you're standing on a sea of liquid energy comes up by the height of the ankles. From here, imagine roots growing out from the bottoms of the feet down to the center core of the earth. And as you inhale, you're going to imagine this golden light racing up the roots, up the legs into the visceral cavity as I inhale. As I exhale, any toxicity from the organs, from the visceral cavity, leading out through the legs, out through the feet, deep into the ground. So with each inhalation, you feel the golden light come up, cleansing the internal organs as you exhale. Allowing for any negativity, any toxicity to leave. Inhale. And exhaling, letting go. Let's do a couple more breaths. Inhale. And letting go. Last breath. Inhale. And exhale. And then from here, coming back to the present, pulling down the heavens one time. Inhale, reaching up towards the sky, connecting with God, the divine. Allow for that to float down through every tissue, every cell of the body. All right, and then slowly open up your eyes and shake out your feet. All right, how do we feel? Very relaxed. All right, again, that meditation is available on, on iTunes and on Spotify. Um, we actually, I actually this year have recorded with C.J. Vanson, uh, the famous composer, um, 12 more Qigong meditations that hopefully will be released later on this year. Yeah, so anyways. All right, more like, content coming to more you. More content. And again, I, no matter how simplistic a meditation is or practices in Qigong, every practice is meant to do something medicinally inside the body. Mm. So this our time together today is to offer tools to uh, be able to 
allow us the opportunity for to increase our tolerance for challenge and improve mental emotional health and our overall well-being okay yeah yeah that's cool it's cutting edge stuff so, so what is our tolerance for challenge how do we build a tolerance for yeah, challenge what does that mean so the the reality is is that you know uh you know uh, i got baptized into the christian faith earlier uh, this last year uh but prior to that you know i really studied the teachings the Taoist teachings of master hua jing ni mm -hmm. and um and in master ni's teachings one of the things that they would he, they would say is is that um uh, a true sage is one that has a lot of life challenges Mm, because it's those obstacles and challenges that help you grow and expand. Yes, because uh, they say a sage cannot become a sage without challenges in their life. The key is, mm. is that how do we work through those? Transmute it. Transmute it, you know. Mm. And so the Taoists, the Buddhists would say, okay, let's go up to the mountains and cultivate ourselves and live a very simple, plain life, you know. Uh -huh. uh, the Taoists say, yes, every once in a while, go away and cultivate yourself. But yeah. be a part of society. It's more virtuous mm. to be a part of society and to give back to society because this is how you learn by mm. mixing with other people with the problems of uh, you know living in society a big yep. city or whatnot and that intertwines with christianity too because they in the bible they say love thy neighbor as thyself as thyself yes yeah. and uh so how do we build this tolerance for challenge well number one we don't just put our head in the sand and pretend like something's not happening when we put mm. our head in the sand and pretend like something's not happening then that's what shows up as disease and also it lowers our, our tolerance as well too we're seeing this so much nowadays mm. especially with the youth and men uh, tolerance for challenge as well yeah, too. Yeah, or stuffing their emotions. Men stuffing their emo emotions, but when mm -hmm. we're talking tolerance for challenge. Oh yes, yes, yes. We're seeing it a the lot. Kids with the kids are soft. The kids are soft. Uh, the way that the system is now being set up is that uh, teachers cannot discipline the kids. The kids mm. are allowed to swear at their teachers, uh, be disrespectful. Uh, parents aren't allowed to parent the way that they should anymore. And what the system, at least here in California, the, the way the system is set up is for the kid just to be. Complacent. To run the show. To run the show. How you feel. Yeah. The problem yeah. with that, though, is that if you don't build a resistance or a tolerance or challenge, then as you get older and you get out into the real world, then how do you deal with it? Yeah. And so nowadays, yeah, the way that a lot of people deal with it is medicating themselves. Mm. And so you have a choice. Meditation or medication? <laughs> my, my, meditate or medicate? Yeah, I suggest <laughs> meditate over medication. Um, you know, years ago yeah, after I... After I got off the drugs, after my second heart attack, um, uh, uh, when I was like 19 years old or 20 years old, my mom walked in on me and I had the gun underneath my chin, the rifle underneath my chin because mm. I was done, you know, and I was put on those medications. Now, sometimes, you know, we need to back people off the cliff, but like, you as we're seeing here in Los Angeles, uh, we've lost a, a few close friends here in LA uh, due to suicide. Those medications, don't always mix. It's like a cocktail. You just don't know how it's going to mix with your chemistry. Right. Yeah. Especially the antidepressants. It's called oh. antidepressant, but it sometimes has the reverse of the reverse. So. so really, how can we build this tolerance for challenge? Um, number one, I would say is, is communicate in talking about your feelings, mm. talking about things. I would say um, also too, is that um, um, understanding what chronic stress does because the reality is, is that we have stressors that come up into our life, right? And then we have the reaction to the stress. Well, what does that mean? Uh, we could either react by suppressing, we could react by exploding and lashing mm. out. Uh, we could react also by overeating, drinking too much, mm -hmm. uh, using over-the-counter medications mm -hmm. or other recreational drugs to Escaping. escape. So escapism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, Isolation. But did you know that over-meditating is a form of escapism too? Mm, it has to be balanced. It has to be balanced. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, just because you think, okay, well, I'm, I'm meditating all the time and, and doing Avoid, this kind of And then uh, avoiding avo what's going what's on. What's really going on in the outside world. Yeah. So anyways, we have this reaction to stress. And and if we suppress it, or if it continues to bombard us, let's say we're having it come from all different One thing directions. after the next, after the next. Then what happens is it begins to create inflammation, which is wear and tear on the body, which mm. is wear and tear uh, on the nervous system and mm. the organs. And then from there, reduce ultimate health, right? Yeah, because your threshold is now, boop, lowered. Yeah, and everybody has a different uh, threshold, or I would say a different size cover. For myself, uh, I tend to handle stress uh, 
a lot of uh, large amounts of stress because I grew up in a stressful environment. So, right. so you're used to so it. So talking about that last That's slide true. about the tolerance for challenge, it actually built my tolerance for challenge. So I can mm. have many different stressors come on at once. And the great thing though is that I was introduced to Qigong at such a young age. And so Wow, it was a miracle. Yeah, so just because <laughs> uh, um, you know I've been doing this stuff for a long time doesn't mean that I don't have stressors still come in. So when the reduced optimum health happens, and guess what? You have an increased sensitivity to that stress. Mm. So, so now the okay. more minor things are now affecting you. Just irritate, you. road rage. Mm -hmm. But other, other, things, other things too that are warning signs too. Mm. So if you have an uh, a adversity to light, if you have an adverse reaction oh. to loud sounds, or if you have a chemical reaction to smells or to certain mm. foods, guess what? That's your body knocking on your door saying, look, the stress has accumulated and my cup is full mm. and I can't handle any more. Wow. So if you find that you're somebody that does not like to be touched or you know doesn't like a massage or whatever mm. um, because you're so, your skin is so sensitive, that's the body's warning sign for you that the stress has now gotten to the place to where your nervous system is in fight mode. Mm. For I'm, my, I'm just thinking for myself, I know that loud sounds irritate me. Loud sounds irritate me. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, so, yeah. yeah. So anyways, um, this is what the chronic stress does. Is there any other question? Well, yeah, there's just a great comment from Nan, who's already joined the teacher training. Hi, Parisa and Chris. Hi, Nan. I am here for day four. Very grateful for this free week of Chi coaching and wonderful information. And she said, so well said, Chris. Everyone, including children, need effective coping skills Thank and you. resilience tools. Resilience tools, yeah. Yeah, so one of the things that we realize, too, in this day and age, especially if you uh, live in a big city, like, you know, we're from the San Francisco mm -hmm. Bay Area, originally in Silicon Valley, the heart of Silicon Valley. Uh, and a lot of our clients, what's funny is, is that I joke around is that... Um, down here, we have a lot of celebrity clients, patients that come in. Up there in the Bay Area, our celebrity clients are like the CEOs of Apple, you know, of these Computer. large high-tech companies. But the problem with these high-tech high jobs, though, is that um, uh, burnout is happening because of the long hours. Right. But also, Because it's an international market, so they're waking up early, staying up late. But also, too, we have uh, government contracts with Santa Clara County, mm -hmm. and uh, we're in charge of the, what is it, the 23,000 employees for employee wellness, where we teach classes for mental health. We teach classes on understanding disease and disease prevention and such. Since 2015. Yeah, we've been doing mm -hmm. this for quite a while. So yeah. the, uh, the Santa Clara County up there is actually, I would say, cutting, cutting edge, edge because Absolutely. they're the only county of that size uh, that's doing uh, down here in LA. I don't think they're doing anything like that. I don't even think they have a budget set aside we for should. for mental health and to because what they realize, what Santa Clara County realizes, yes, physical fitness is important, mm. but what's really going on inside of our bodies is of utmost importance. That's true. So when we when, so what I'm getting to is is that we notice that there's a lot of conditions of burnout, and one of the talks that they gave uh, for employee wellness was how to recognize or how to beat the burnout. All right, and the first thing to do is to watch. For the warning signs of burnout mm. do you have any any idea what the warning some some of the warning signs are sensitivity to loud sounds <laughs> <laughs> yes, sensitivity okay to loud eye sounds. tremor oh, yeah. um uh things that you once found enjoyable you're like yeah mm -hmm. sleeping a lot okay anything else um maybe constipation yes all right digestion so if you get into uh, um, a lot of these digestive disorders mm. like Crohn's disease, colitis, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, um, acid reflux, GERD, which is basically the same thing, you know, these mm. are all signs. If you find that uh, you're not sleeping throughout the night, these are all signs. Mm. Like she said, the little eye tremor can be telling us that there's a, um, a temporary? general temporary stress, mm -hmm. but that eye tremor keeps on going. Guess what? It could be telling us a long term that something else is going to come up. Like mm. one of the most painful diseases is also called the suicide disease is trigenital facial neuralgia. And what it does is it affects the trigenital nerve in the face and there's oh. no cure in Western medicine. Uh, Qigong Chinese medicine can help with it. I've seen patients with this. And what it does is the nerves in the face seize. There's a, it's tri, it's a three-pronged three nerve. Three-pronged nerve and, and they seize and you can't oh. get a cortisone shot. You can't take a pain pill to get rid of it. I mean, it's that painful. Painful, and that's why if it goes on for a long period of time, 
they call it the suicide disease because unfortunately people will take their lives because of the amount of pain that they're in. Dang. So that little eye tremor, and going back to the gentleman that was talking about the stroke, mm. that little eye tremor also could be telling us about a potential aneurysm, could be telling us about a potential stroke. So pay attention. Mm. So if your body is changing now, you know, and you're having these little symptoms, you know, belt, because, you know, I was at the gym. In fact, last week I was at the gym. I was making mm -hmm. this comment. And uh, there was this guy there, young guy, probably in his mid-20s, okay. fit. Uh, had, you know, good-looking body, fit, yeah. good, good shape. But he was belching like crazy mm. um, in, in, in the locker room there. And um, which shows us that... Loudly? Even, loudly. <laughs> so what shows us that, mm. that, yes, his body looks fit. But something Something's else is going on inside. Bubbling up, literally. Literally. Okay. Oh. So once you recognize these warning signs, then you have to undo the damage. And hopefully Unravel. you yeah, yeah, hopefully you undo it before it settles into a more serious condition, you know. So yes, um, that's seeking true. out support, support groups. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why uh, AA works out so well, is because mm. you actually have to be if you're an alcoholic or an addict, you have to be around other people that are addicts. To understand your disease. What's going on? Yeah, because yeah. if you're if you're around people that don't drink or don't have that addictive personality, you're it's not hard going to understand. You can't understand because they see the behavior, but they don't understand the person's actually sick. Yeah, they think it's a willpower issue, and it's right. not a willpower issue, you know. Mm. And uh, um, but in China, go, uh, they actually have. Uh, in their in the Beijing hospital for their cancer support unit mm -hmm. uh, where they mix Western and Chinese medicine together they put you in the support group just like AA so I see but the difference is you're given certain meditations uh, mm -hmm. specific meditations according to your uh, your constitution and, ca and cancer that you oh, have the type of cancer uh, you're also given a certain diet and certain herbs in order to help to rectify it and also guess what you're given certain specific qigong practices as well too wow that's cool so what will happen is is that um, real health care real health care okay. so what will happen is is that uh, when you uh, reverse by seeking support applying practices like qigong diving deeper you know like we have mm. a qigong this teacher qigong teacher training course is for a person to dive deeper into themselves and it's only 13 mm. weeks the first level is only 13 weeks because it's just enough for you to dive in deeper and mm. really learn your body Wow. And guess what that does? That builds your resilience. Who couldn't use more resilience on this planet? Yeah, so it right. builds your resilience yep. and your physical... Your, and your... tolerance to, uh, to, ex to receive more stress. Yeah, to be or and it changes. It, it, yeah, it transmutes itself. So yeah, so yeah, so um, qigong is not the only practice out there. I mean, there's other practices too that we incorporate into our daily lives as well. Um, and that's the great thing about being down here in Los Angeles is that uh, there's so many what they call quote unquote biohacking opportunities that we take advantage of um, every week. Uh, yeah. We do. We do. We mm -hmm. seriously do. We seriously do. I love it. Okay, so Jim Rohn is probably one of my all time favorite uh, speakers on character building, on financial independence. And, you know, um, and one of the things that he says, uh, one of his quotes, and this is not the full quote, but. He said in his talks, he said, the same wind blows on us all. It's the set of the sail that determines the outcome. You know, so mm. one of the things that he says is that, you know, it's the, the, the winds of change. The, the winds of disaster. The winds of disaster. The winds of loss. Mm. You know, uh, these are all winds. It's just the, the setting of the sail. And when you change that mm. direction, even if just it's a little boop. bit over the long haul, guess what? Where you end up in the trajectory is a completely different place. Which is, brings up something fascinating about mm. Chinese astrology because Chinese astrology, uh, a person's fate is built upon, based upon the four pillars. Okay, the four so, pillars, which um, are? Hour. Hour you're born. Day. Day you're born. Month. Year. Oh, month, month and year. And year, yes. Oh, I thought you were going to say something about the environment. But also location. Location will play a role mm -hmm. too. So, But they mainly go on the four pillars there. Okay. And, but they say that that will kind of predetermine a person's fate. But if a person starts to cultivate themselves mm. with an internal practice like Qigong or Tai Chi, mm -hmm. uh, then what will happen is they could no longer tell the fate of that person because they've changed the vibration. They mm. uh, have adjusted their sail and now the long term, you don't know where it's going to go. Mm. And more likely because you have adjusted the sail, unless some, God forbid, accident happened to you, um, that adjustment of the sale, chances are, will bring you 
a, a better life, bring in more mm. positive people into your life that are loving and supportive, which will also help you ha develop this tolerance uh, for yeah. challenge as well, too. So It's the philosophical question of free will versus divine mm -hmm. will or destiny. Mm -hmm. Free will versus destiny. Yeah, and that's for sure. Um, and that's the thing is that, uh, uh, um, you know, God gives us, that's the thing that he gives us, right? Is, or it is gives free, us is yeah. free will. So we can use that free will in, in either direction, good or bad. Right. right. And I know for myself, years ago, uh, you know, like I said on one of the videos earlier this week, that Johnny Cash song, Walk the Line, is definitely <laughs> me because I was definitely, I would push the envelope. You were on the line. You know, um, I, I so that. I was on the line too. So that's what free will does. So we could either use it to cultivate and improve our well being, or we could create disharmony and disaster mm -hmm. for ourselves. And it yeah. radiates out Everyone our family, you're... you know, society, depending on what your role is in society. Mm. And the other thing too is by what you are thinking about. So even if you're at home and, and you're just watching the news and, and yeah. you're getting upset over things that you're seeing, if you're dwelling on that kind of stuff, mm. guess what will happen is, is that it will actually radiate outwards. So if you see riots going on mm -hmm. in um, other parts of the country or whatever, if, if you're thinking at that low vibration, guess what? You actually are resonating at that vibration as well, too. Yes. And, and the challenge is because everybody has one of these in their at the palm of their hand, so we have access to those images constantly. So the nervous system is overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. But that's what's so cool about Qigong is that it gives you an opportunity to calm your nervous system down, and that is a major benefit because then you boost your resiliency, and you stress less, literally. Literally stress less. So what we're looking here for Qigong, again, the salad Qigong that we're teaching and the Qigong uh, teacher training course, um, when you go through my book, when you sign up and you go through the handouts and everything that are given to you every week, the whole mm -hmm. idea is for you to start to begin to understand how the body functions. So what I'm mm. doing in this 13 week course is I'm introducing you to the foundations, very, very basic foundations of classical Chinese medicine, just so you understand. Now we asked you to download your five element questionnaire and that five element questionnaire will tell us when you're out of balance. When you're, because mm -hmm. when you're deviate from that typology, that's what indicates disease. And a question that came in yesterday mm -hmm. was that, um, well, is it the deficiency element that I'm looking at too? And the answer is yes. Mm. So if you're weak in a certain element like water, which means your kidneys are weak or whatever, mm -hmm. then we need to watch out for that. But it's our deviation. The other question that uh -huh. the scale asked was that, can our element typologies change? And yes, they can. But it normally takes a life-changing circumstance in order for that to change. Okay. So for example, um, when... Um, I used to be more of an earth type, but then when I started uh, competing again in my late 20s uh, and fighting and then running the business, uh, Morning Crane, uh, that's more of a wood energy or mm -hmm. wood element. And so my element typology is wood. Changed. It changed to wood. My secondary though typology is earth. So I do fall I back on some mm -hmm. earth um, features. Features. In fact, uh, traits. what is it that you call me? A hunter-gatherer? Well, I'm a hunter-gatherer, but you call me something else. Um, oh, she calls me the moral police. Oh, yes. <laughs> she so calls me the moral true. police. Um, and that's more of an earth trait. It's also a wood trait as well, too. Um, but yeah, I don't do well with uh, people bullying other people, taking advantage. In fact, mm. my dad said to me years ago... Uh, uh, he said, you, you know, make a good, uh, he said, you'd make a good attorney. I think if I was an attorney, I'd be a civil rights attorney. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'd be. Cause I don't like when people you take like it, to stand up. For yeah. The I don't like dog. when people take advantage of other people. So there's so many great benefits of practicing Qigong. And, uh, and one of the things most importantly that it does is it increases our tolerance for challenge and change also, cause some people don't do well with change too. Yes. And so, uh, like I said, Master Ni, uh, who's a, what, 38th generation Taoist in Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, master. Uh, master, and also a medical doctor. Mm. He started Yosan University, the prestigious acupuncture college here in L.A. He's written uh, numerous Back in the books. 80s, yeah. He's written numerous books on Chinese medicine and herbologies. Um, his sons, Dr. Dao and Dr. Mao, now run the university as well as run the Dao Wellness Center here in Santa Monica, also in Pasadena, California, which is a little bit north of us. And one of the things is that Master Ni would say in one of his books is that uh, by practicing self-cultivation techniques, one develops sensitivities to the energy constantly circling, circling within 
and without around our bodies. Wow. So the that's other, cool. And the other, if you so, really think about that. Well, because the other thing that's cool that what he said, uh, correct me if, if I make a mistake on this quote, is that he said, just like a fish is unaware of the vast ocean that it's swimming in. The fact, just as the fish is unaware that it lives in water, mm. we, we too are unaware uh, of the vast, inexhaustible sea of chi, sea the, of life force energy, which supports our life. This supports our life. We are really, we really don't recognize. And that's why I said that even mm. we, um, those of you that are on uh, watching right now on YouTube or here on TikTok, even though we may be miles apart from each other, our vibrational energies are still connected. Ooh, that gave me goosies. Now, this gets more into the quantum realm yeah. and the quantum physics and That's stuff, which cool. her parents could talk more about that because they are uh, physicists. Literally quantum physicists. Physicists. <laughs> but every, there's a sea of energy that happens. It's all around us. And what Qigong also does is it allows us to understand that not only can we improve our vibration, our um, how long our life will be, uh, mm -hmm. this fountain of youth that so many mm. people are, are trying to uh, gain, but also the interconnectedness that we have with mm. all beings. Wow. All beings have a purpose, and have a purpose, you know, whether on this planet or in mm -hmm. the multi universe, have a purpose. Mm. And so we are all interconnected. And um, so when it, and if anybody says, no, I'm separate from you or whatever, right. you may have a different belief structure, right. sure. But we are still connected. We are all connected. all connected. So being able to practice Qigong builds our tolerance for challenge, gives us tools to be able to uh, handle burnout, reverse mm. it, gives us tools to handle inflammatory diseases. Yes. And guess what it does too? Is it, it, it really um, gives us the tools also to deal with mental health. That's number one, I think, in this time and age. In this age. time and age, uh, mental yeah. health, yeah. Emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, because earlier this week we talked about, um, you know, we talked about uh, uh, the different emotions and mm -hmm. how they um, affect different our, organs, different internal organs of the body. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that, you know, our, our heart-mind connection, this heart-mind connection that we have, um, uh, several years ago, uh, here at the Shrine Auditorium, a uh, priest and I went and saw Deepak Chopra and Eckhart Tolle speak. And um, they had two chairs, they had a little table with a, a vase with a, a flower sticking out of the vase. And Deepak Chopra said to the sold out audience, he said to everybody, he said, do you see the rose that's in this vase? And everybody nodded yes or said yes. He said, okay, study the rose. He said, now close your eyes. Okay. And so he said, can, every, can you see the rose? Yes. Okay, so everybody said yes or nodded yes. He said, now open up your eyes. Deepak Chopra then went on to say, he goes, nowhere inside your brain is a rose. So what does that mean? That means that the brain is a reflection of your reality. Our consciousness Whoa. is here in the heart. In the heart. As a matter of mm. fact, we have a saying that the heart houses the mind, which houses the spirit or houses mm. the Shen. So the more intact the heart is, the more intact one is with spirit. Okay, and mm. we can actually tell clinically uh, in diagnosis, we can actually tell by looking at the luster of a person's eyes, whether their heart is healthy or not, because if their heart is dull, excuse me, if, they're, if the luster of their eyes is dull or looks cloudy, uh, chances are um, there's a disconnect between the heart and the mind. And then we see mental illness and disease. You got up. good sparkle in your eyes. I got eyes. good sparkle. So yeah, so if somebody <laughs> has good sparkle in their eye, that means that they have... A strong, strong heart. And strong, well, a oh, strong, strong spirit. spirit. Strong spirit. Strong spirit. Strong spirit yeah. and heart. Yeah. Wow. All right. Everyone has their phones up. They're looking at their pictures right now <laughs> to see their eyes. Okay. <clears throat> So here's the truth about uh, stress reduction, okay? Our minds are more powerful than what most people realize. Um, and, uh, you know, I have a saying, you'll hear me say this in the Qigong teacher training, you'll hear me say, allow for the imagination to lead the mind and the mind to lead the smooth flow of the qi, okay? Mm. And, uh, and yes, and if you have a hard time understanding what qi is, just think of it as ter in terms of blood or fluids inside the body. Once you start to apply these practices, you will start to see and feel the inner and outer results. Mm. And as a result of that, you really start to live that life that we are all meant and deserve to live. Yes. You know, we shouldn't have to live a life of pain and suffering. That's the, true. To me, there's a way out. There's, there mm. are answers. And, you know, mm. one of the great things about our YouTube channel 
about Chris Shelton Qigong on YouTube is that I have all these different videos on health related topics mm -hmm. but in particular the 30 days of Qigong on there uh, mm. people from around the world have commented where they weren't able to access a Qigong class or a, t a teacher or whatever mm -hmm. and but they followed the advice they followed the practices and, and miraculously transmuted and transformed their own disease yeah. and it's not magic it's, well, and even yesterday in day three's class, um, we talked about Lisa from Utah, mm -hmm. who literally was dying of stage four cancer. And while in the hospital, went on YouTube, found the videos, could would, would play it for like a minute or two and then have to take a break, play it, visualize herself doing it. And then she became a Qigong teacher training graduate. And pa passing it forward. Amazing. Yeah, really passing it forward. Yeah, and helping so many people. Yeah, and so, um, so yeah, so I would say that by practicing these practices, and, you know, it starts off, you know, 10 or 15 minutes a day, mm -hmm. but if you could build up to an hour a day, that's mm -hmm. great. But all it takes is about 10 or 15 minutes a day to really sure. start to apply this. Yeah. But the, I would say that the great thing about the structure of, um, the uh, Qigong teacher training program is is giving you the tools to be the best part of to have the best life that you are meant to and designed to live. You know, mm. and again, I just I'm going to say it again. I don't believe that we're meant to have suffering and struggle in our life. Mm. And suffering and struggle, I think, is necessary uh, for us to grow. And I know mm -hmm. for myself, uh, I created a lot of my own suffering. If I was mm. honest with myself, a lot of the mishaps that showed up in my life, which then I guess you know would affect my health. Uh, I have to look honestly in the mirror at myself. That's, yeah, how we attracted it and what where we were at that time. So one of my favorite Qigong practices, if you haven't joined us all week, I would recommend that you go back and watch the last four videos or the last three videos. But one of my favorite practices that I give, so um, as a uh, clinical director for the Special Olympics in California for mm -hmm. Healthy Athletes, Strong Minds, when I'm giving talks, uh, when I'm working with the athletes and their families, uh, there's uh, three practices that I give, three Qigong practices. One, uh, I like to give a conscious breath. Exhale. Because when people say, well, I can't meditate because my mind is going to, my brain is going mm -hmm. too much, I'm thinking too much. Um, when you take that conscious breath, it's hard for you to think of anything else. The uh, second thing is the healing sound for the heart, which, okay. is, which is ha. There's okay. a healing sound. And then the third one is the uh, practice of shaking the tree or shaking it off, okay? So it's a very simple practice because, you know, if a dog is happy to see you or your dog <laughs> is angry at you, that dog will then, after he or she does what it does, they will shake from head to toe. Mm. They're shaking off that excess That's energy. That's right. I, I love mean, that it, picture, by the way. Yeah. I know for us, I don't know if you hear a little dog walking behind us right now, but um, she's just walking behind me right now. But anyways, uh, right you know, you. she'll get excited and want to play around and she'll shake from uh, from head to toe. Yeah. She wanted to you know? say hi. So anyways, uh, two ducks get into a fight. The fight lasts a few seconds. They swim away. And first thing they do is they violently flap their wings. Why? Because they're conscious enough to know that there's this vibration inside mm. the body. Which brings it back to, before I show this practice, uh, years ago, one of my friends uh, and clients up there in uh, San Jose uh, had a gopher business. And uh, he was telling me a story that he's in Pebble Beach, which is on the uh, central coast mm. near Carmel. Mm. And um, Just recovering from some bad storms. Just recovering from some horrible mm. storms. Speaking but, of challenges. Uh, but anyways, uh, what he was talking about is somebody called and said that a deer was stuck on the golf course in the barbed wire and the barbed wire and mm -hmm. so they went over there got the deer out of there put the deer in the back of the golf cart and then they drove to the other side where the where the woods are where there's more trees and he said it was really interesting because they put, took her off the golf cart the deer collapsed and then all of a sudden he said that she shook violently from head to toe wow. and then pounced off like nothing ever happened just convulsed stood up and then went boop. Well, I don't know about convulsing. <laughs> or shake. I mean, shake. What, yeah. yeah, you said violently shaking. That's okay. I don't know if it's convulsive. All going. right, so this is the practice. So the next time somebody <laughs> makes you angry, uh, we have a saying here that is not fun, it's family. Uh, <laughs> it's not fun in fact, this, this past Christmas, we actually checked out and took off to Phoenix. They're like, peace out. We're not we dealing with you guys this year. <laughs> We're not dealing with this anymore. Too much going on. Too much on. going on. All right, so okay, here's so, the practice. Yes, yeah, why we need to shake it off. You're going to start with the fingers, inhale, rotate it all the way up, and just let that stuff go. Now, if something has upset you, just really let that stuff go, okay? It's really important just to shake it off. Now, 
<sighs> what's interesting is is that um, you may have that vibration or those thoughts that still come up for you but the key here is we're trying to let you give you a tool to deal with the vibration totally I remember what remember the several <laughs> years uh, about six or seven years ago my older half-brother had sent this nasty um, condescending email mm. and um, you know my first reaction is like everybody is to react and and said like you can't you can't talk to crazy so I didn't even do that anyways I had to shake it off literally literally throughout yeah. the day and throughout the day like the thought came up of that email I would, I would shake it off I so, had to do that just from yesterday to today <laughs> so anyways <laughs> You know, um, having these practices and doing that practice is a great way to help to reduce inflammation because guess what? When somebody makes you angry or agitates you, that further, further binds the blood <laughs> and chi of the internal organs, mm. increases inflammation inside the body, which then increases disease. And then also can to, if you, especially if you're repressing anger or irritation, yeah. can actually build up and create more anger or irritation, which when not dealt with properly turns into depression. Wow. And if you think about like the vernacular and like how we literally say, like if someone's upset, you would tell them to sh shake it off. You'll be okay. Shake it off. Like we say that all the time, but how often do we physically do it? Right. So now we're saying physically do it. I'm just seeing a lot of the likes and follows come in. Thank you so much. Lulu PTX. Okay. Yeah, so again, the, that healing sound is, is so important, the ha healing sound. Now, the great thing about the Qigong teacher training program, I said this yesterday, is that we call it a teacher training program, but what we realize is that um, there's a lot of students that took the program that just want to dive deeper. Self-development. Self-personal development. Mm -hmm. And um, we call our program the most comprehensive programs out there. Now there are some people, some other instructors up in Northern California, I'm not going to say their names, but have um, uh, attached their, their commercials to our YouTube page and kind of tried to follow what we're doing. But the reality is, is that that's a compliment. It's a compliment because we have the most comprehensive Qigong teacher training program out there because they're not just teaching you for the purpose of you feeling good. Mm. What we're doing is we're teaching you so you understand your body understand your body and other people's bodies and the patterns that occur and then how to transform that so mm. one of the you know uh what there's five healths that we look at one mm. is our mental emotional health mental emotional physical physical um, um uh, fi uh, financial financial um relationship relationship health, healthy relationships healthy relationships and ready for the last one the last one is vocational, your career health, which is also your spiritual health because what you do on a day-to-day -day basis impacts your relationship with the creator, the divine within and all around you. Yeah, going back to Dr. Mao, we were at a workshop several years ago um, for CEUs and, um, and he said, uh, well, uh, in, during this class, you know, there's physicians, there's lawyers, there's all different career paths there. He said, now everybody raise their hand who is happy with their career path. And there's only several of us that rose our hands. And he's like, wow, I'm surprised at this. He said, this is very a very profound statement for me. Dr. Mao said, you know, before you come into this life form, you sign a contract with heaven that you are to find your life purpose. Because when you find your life purpose, mm -hmm. this is how God or the divine is able to express itself through you. Wow. So the great thing is, is that, um, if you're on YouTube, you see this picture here. The reason why uh, there's the cleaver and the uh, uh, butcher outfit, because I was a butcher for 21 but he, but years. He's cutting carrots. <laughs> I was a butcher for 21 years. Wow. Um, you know, even though I uh, grew up in a dysfunctional home and I had these drug issues and health issues, I still had a lot of ambition, you know. Mm -hmm. So I started yeah. becoming a butcher at age 15 and a half. Uh, I did my AP studies in art. Um, I still have two art scholarships I haven't used for college. And then also I went to a vocational school during school and then during the summer to where I got my class A state break license, my license certification overhauling engines. So I thought, okay, if I don't make it as a butcher, I'll be an artist. If I don't make it as an artist, then I'll be a mechanic. You had a bunch of backup plans. Yeah, healer was not on my plan. I was not a teacher, Qigong and Tai Chi teacher was not on my radar. Uh, being a healer was not on my <laughs> radar. Though I've always enjoyed wow. science and I've always enjoyed medicine. So the great thing about our Qigong teacher training program is that it's going to give you tools. Um, if you are seeking to get out there and start teaching, maybe you want yeah. to, you have kids in school and you, 
and you see the value of kids learning these tools to help to deal with right. resilience and change or, and challenge. Or perhaps you're a personal trainer or a chiropractor working with people on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, and you know, and just going back to a personal trainer, I talked about this. Uh, I was just at the Fit Expo this last weekend uh, performing Qigong on stage here in Los Angeles after uh, Taibo creator Billy Blake's uh, uh, workout. And uh, you know, some of the personal trainers that were participating in the class that came up to me afterwards and they said, you know, you know, this is so great because, you know, uh, the reality is is that when people come to train, sometimes they get these injuries that happen, right? Right. They get these injuries. A lot of times, yeah. And they think, well, it's because of my personal trainer, I pushed the weight or too Or the wrong. pillow, I slept wrong on the pillow, the dog leash. And so they, uh, uh, one of the things that, uh, that they talk about is is that you know when you're a personal trainer or you are a chiropractor, or massage therapist, or doc, you know physician, just depending, you know that client is also dumping um, their personal life onto you as well yeah. too. What's going on? You know my spouse is cheating on me. You know <laughs> my kids are having problems in school. You know there's a mm. number of things that they talk about. And so the cool thing is is that even if you are in the giving community of any of those type of career paths, mm -hmm. this is something else to add on. Because, this is an add-on. Yeah, because going back to like frozen shoulder and neck pain, yeah. every single cervical issue that I've seen, unless you're doing jujitsu and someone popped your shoulder out or you got into a car accident and popped your shoulder or broke your shoulder or your pitcher and you popped your shoulder out, every single one, it comes back to emotions of the heart mm -hmm. and I'll give you an example so uh, our fr friend of ours Mike Kroger who is the guitarist for the rock and roll band Nickelback uh, several years ago my friend Eric the Chainer and Lisa from the TV show Celebrity Sweat out in Chicago um, he had cervical arthritis you can see the cervical arthritis in his x-ray he flew out to San Jose and I said to Mike like I say to all my clients I said okay before this pain showed up in your neck, what was going on in your life? And he goes, no, man. He goes, I think it's the stress of being on tour. He said, um, you know what? I think the way I hold my guitar when I'm on stage is mm. what did it. And then he paused and he thought about it. Mm -hmm. And he said that, um, he said, actually, two weeks before the pain showed up, my horse died. Mm. So his horse died. He did what all of us would do. He took care of business, went back on tour. And one day his body said to him, okay. You could pretend like that didn't hurt you, but it did. Now, Mike gave an amazing uh, testimonial. Um, he said, I got rid of his arthritis in 30 minutes. Um, he gave a testimony. It's on the Chris Shelton uh, Qigong YouTube page. So if you scroll down, you'll see that interview. Uh, with I believe it's with Celebrity Sweat. Is, with yeah. the TV show Celebrity Sweat. And really what I did was, was that I started to facilitate his body to change. And what had happened was, if you pay attention to the etiology of the acupuncture vessels that run from the hands all the way up to the neck and the face, they are influenced by the heart at some mm. level, directly or indirectly. And so all that I did was, was that I just facilitated this to this realization, number one, which mm -hmm. began the healing effect, like, oh, yeah. my horse diet actually affected me more than what I thought it did. Mm -hmm. But then also, too, uh, what I'm doing when I'm working with a person, understanding the emotional component mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the chronic pain issue, I know what points to hit in order to release it. Mm. And that release can be intense, but you feel better after. Yeah, so the nice thing about um, a, a career as a Qigong teacher trainer is that you get to enhance your own well-being. Again, we talk about, it first comes back to us first. It comes back to us improving our, enhancing our health um, and increasing our uh, joy for living life. Uh, but then too, paying it forward, being able to mm -hmm. help others. Um, if you're already uh, a practitioner, this is something else you can add on to what it is that you're already doing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're thinking of like, you know what, um, you know, I want to change. As a matter of fact, uh, our level one Qigong teacher training, level one and level two, is a prerequisite for a new program that we just launched, uh, which is a two-year, yeah, the curative Qigong program, which is a two-year mastermind program. Uh, we launched this level first um, here in September. Mm -hmm. In fact, the students from that actually just took their quarterfinal exams this past Saturday and Sunday. Yep. And, um, and the whole idea of it is that uh, these people 
are planning on clinicians uh, becoming clinicians yeah. because what I do in clinical practice that success in clinical practice I can actually teach to other people in fact my next book on how to fix uh, back problems yourself it's coming out soon it's coming out soon is to teach people how to do this yourself understanding the ideology understanding the emotions behind it mm. um, and then the other books after that on common conditions how to fix it yourself and then more difficult conditions you know like I was talking about like trigeminal facial neur neuralgia or Meniere's disease etc anyways this level one and level two uh, teacher training program is the prerequisite for that two year curative Qigong mastermind program. And the whole idea is, is that I want to teach people to do what I do and get the same results because I have a high expectation on myself to see results. And then they go back into their communities and help other people. So once again, mm -hmm. we're talking about energy and that ripple uh, effect like the pond, the pebble in the pond. Um, or the butterfly who flaps her wings. I'm the po I'm the pebble, and then from there that ripple effect is you going out there, learning, applying it to yourself, mm. seeing the transformation in yourself, and then from there going out and sharing this and, and moving and spreading it forward. I like that. Yeah. You're the pebble. Yeah, I'm the pebble. I'm about as tall as a pebble. I'll be the <laughs> pond. <laughs> okay, so. How are we feeling? How are we feeling right now? Um, we should have asked this question in the very beginning on scale of one to ten at the mm. beginning of the talk. Yeah. You know, where are you at right now? Um, how are you feeling? And then how do you feel now? Um, hopefully after that one through t uh, that center and balance meditation, um, you're feeling much calmer. And after uh, this discussion that we're having right now on health and disease and um, how to build a tolerance for challenge, um, uh, how to recognize burnout, um, hopefully now you're feeling better. Um, that's our whole motivation. So. So yeah, so once again, we'd like for you, uh, we're open up the cart today. It's today, today yeah. Okay. It's open. Oh, it's yeah, open. Yeah, it's now. Now is the time. QigongTeacherTraining.com. Sign up. Our next level one will be starting Monday, January 23rd. Online. It's an online program. 13 weeks on-demand videos, as well as coaching calls with Chris and myself live on Zoom. And then at the end of that 13 weeks, we get together. You can come to our office in Burbank, or you can join us on Zoom. You have a choice. We get together for a weekend of fun, chi, cultivating, and uh, it's just really inspiring and uplifting for yourself. And then you'll see how it affects and helps other people as well. Yeah, and so uh, just to be transparent, even though this is a uh, interact, we call it an interactive uh, online t uh, teacher training program or Qigong mm -hmm. program, um, it is that way, but there is a, a live forum where you get to connect with other students yeah. in your mm -hmm. group. Um, you have connection to us as well, too. So it's not like you're just talking yeah. to a computer screen. You're by yourself. Yeah. It's very interactive. It's interactive. We are humans on the other side, and we want to connect with you and be there and support you through this whole journey. So we do three coaching calls throughout mm -hmm. the journey and throughout this 13 weeks. And once again, as Parisa was just mentioning, then we meet live in person for the practical hands-on. It's a Saturday and a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, with each order, you get a binder. Mm -hmm. So your custom binder and with the handouts, you'll print the handouts. The idea is that you put your handouts in the binder. There's two books. There's Chris's book, Qigong for Self-Refinement, Total Health with the Five Elements, where we dive deeper into the five elements. And then the other book, Dr. Mao's book, How to Live Your Ultimate Life. You get a cool t-shirt and a lot of new and fun friends. New fun friends and really an invaluable tool um, that you could take with you anywhere and then and then uh, be able to spread and share this. So, uh, you know, ultimately what we're after here in this, t in this Qigong program, this level one being 13 weeks, is the self-cultivation techniques that helps you build your tolerance for challenge. It helps you mm -hmm. have tools to stress less. Mm -hmm. uh, the found, This foundation um, is priceless. And once again, Jim Rohn said it best, you know, if you mm -hmm. have a book on how to prevent heart disease mm. that 1999 that you're paying for is for the paper the ink the publishing etc cetera, etc cetera, distribution uh, but if that book on how to prevent heart disease saves your life or saves you from having a heart attack mm -hmm. or saves uh, somebody else from having a heart attack that's you priceless you, you can't that. put a price on that yeah and so again the, our whole idea with the style of qigong that we're teaching is is really to empower you and to be able to take control, back control over your own health care. And that's the whole idea, is being able to um, take control over that health care, be able to uh, live the life that you're supposed to live, and really self-empower yourself. And, and, um, and then again, spreading it forward. Mm. And it's invaluable. Uh, what, you know, the, 
the initial investment here uh, that starts on the January 23rd on Monday is 1995 or four payments of 525 and um, you know again what people have said to us is that Chris Parisa you know that what I learned in your teacher training program and how I continue to bring it push it forward um, and apply it to my life on a daily basis has transformed my life so much Absolutely. so it's a um, it's a small amount but really what it comes back to is it comes back to an investment into mm. yourself what? And you also have a payment option of four payments for 525. Yeah, four payments of 525. Four. Again, ultimately, it's an investment back into yourself. Mm, and on top exactly. of what else it is, you're doing like uh, proper diet, proper sleep, hydrating properly, mm. and also proper exercise. Qigong, in the style of Qigong that I'm teaching, is one of the few practices out there that dives into the emotional health, mm. which, you know, and I, I see it a lot in clinical practice where somebody is physically fit but yet they're still dying of chronic artery disease. Wow. Does not make sense. If you're eating right and you're exercising, which is what they uh, tell us, um, and you're still dying of chronic artery disease. Something's one, off. Yeah, one component that you're missing is this mental emotional state. Mm, so that's everything. So this is an investment. Um, and then also I forgot to mention that the last day to sign up will be Sunday, January 23rd. So the course starts on Monday. Last day to sign up is that Sunday before. Okay, so I hope that you join us. Um, you know, we're really excited mm -hmm. about this uh, program. Like I said, it's one of the most comprehensive programs out there. Um, I know that for a fact. And, um, mm -hmm. and through the hundreds of students that have gone through our program, uh, some of these people in this picture here, if you're on um, YouTube, actually are practitioners now. Absolutely. And actually have changed their career to teaching people and helping people in clinic. Mm, so amazing so and it, inspiring. Yeah, amazing and inspiring. Is there any questions from anybody? That Well, tomorrow oh. is going to be the question and answer. So I've gathered many, many questions. Okay. Tune in again tomorrow, same time, same channel. We're gonna do another Q&A. And if you are indeed interested in joining the Qigong teacher training, then go to qigongteachertraining.com. And we hope to see you there. Yeah, we hope to see you, chair, uh, chi you there. But chi you uh, there. Chi you uh, once chair. again, if you uh, joined us late or if you joined us have been on since the very beginning, I want to thank you so much for thank spending you. your valuable time. Uh, if you've been following us all this week on this Chi Discovery Week, thank you for your time. Mm. Uh, please like, please subscribe, please yeah. share these videos with your friends and family. Our big mission, first and foremost, is to educate and to uplift and to self empower. Self-empowered. So, so how, how can do you I, spell up? So how can I help you be the best version of yourself that you could possibly be? That's what we're going after, right? So how do we spell love? That's cool. L-O-V-E. -E. Love. And, and we, we will see you later. <laughs> see ya. See you tomorrow. Questions and answers tomorrow. Any health questions? Any questions about the... Uh,